Hey people, what, what's going on? It's Sunday night, and uh, <clears throat> oh, it's been a long day. It's been good. I'm pretty mellow and getting close to going to bed. But I thought, mm, let me see, since I've got this big pile of records from the last few days, let me see if I can just show some before I put them away. <clears throat> and just keep it kind of like straight ahead like that of course something else will probably pop out um today was very busy um with another project involving a podcast about experimental music in nebraska that uh, we're putting i'm putting together you know it's because i have this air conditioner but those kids are loud anyway and it's like it's nine it, it, it does kind of get on my nerves that my neighbors are like that, you know, because these kids will be outside loud like that till as late as midnight and later. And it's just, if I were to try to go, oh man, see how things had to happen. It was like I was going to just talk about music and here I'm talking about all this life stuff. Okay. But I can't talk to them about it. Okay. You know how that goes. Catherine Wheel. Music has been such a savior, you know, as the days go by and the news is just so bad and stays bad and this really strange cult of Trumpism and yes it is a concern and gaslighting me is will not work <laughs> will not work this music has just been a savior I've been burning chrome again I think I showed it the other night but all kinds of stuff. Miroslav Vitus, Infinite Search. One of, an ideal jazz album. Mc, McLaughlin, Herbie Hancock are on here. Joe Henderson. This is, has been reissued under Mountain in the Clouds as well. One of my favorite jazz albums. I've shown it. It's just one that I get back to. Love the band, Opeth. And so, um, I think someone gave this to me. This is the one at Red Rocks played this all the way through love this band I really do someone I do believe someone sent this to me really enjoyable um, I like everything about the band Opus musically the riffs the playing there's passion in their playing too it's just they don't just phone it in future sound of London ISDN I've had this on a couple times in the last couple days. It's like taking a taking a space trip. And this is the um, limited edition. The uh, corners with the uh, stickies are kind of touchy. But this is the three-way cover. Future Sound of London. And it's... Um, taken me really over the years I mean I like them right away I love the graphics love the graphics but the music has has aged well and it's just it makes more sense now the whole approach so ISDN I played this actually all the way through a few times loud ass kids a friend on, was online talking about Prince last night and it prompted me to play this the Versace experience which in some ways is a teaser for the gold experience plus some other stuff because there's some things in here that are just excerpts but um, I just can't say enough good about Prince and you know I just think he was really courageous how he took on the music industry and gave them exactly what they want and then fought fought for his identity fought for his rights to own his own stuff love that man Swedish Tradgrass Oxtenar old stony jam stuff is really what this seems to be it's you can hear it's like basically live or playing for friends or a small group of people this is really good. Moore's, Moore's. A reissue. 
a hard album to find. Nick Cave's solo stuff is, I don't listen to much, you know. But the, when he did the Grinder Man, number two really came out well. So I grabbed it, and I like this. I do like what he put together with these, these other dudes um, who come from different bands, Dirty Three and other stuff. But Grinder Man number two, this is a good one. And then Punk, or just, this is from Punk, but the adrenaline and the energy and the, uh, just the rush of outpouring of this band. Dave Grohl was in this band from Nirvana for a while, not on this album though. Scream, Still Screaming. This is one of my favorites and I just again have to play this one. When it gets to the end with the reggae song I have to pick it up and start it over because it's just so powerful. Still Screaming on Discord. Ian McKay, Straight, straight Edge. I wasn't in the Straight Edge but I supported the, the Straight Edge kids. I even supported the local uh, skinheads, and many of them didn't stay skinheads because of the so solidarity of the local punk scene in Omaha back in the 80s. We're still like a um, really misfit family, a lot of us still co co connected. A band called Capitolo, uh, um, they're actually called Italian band, Patali del Cariglione, but they were also called Carrion del Dolore for a while, so both names run here. A, a goth band, but there's atmospheric parts of these songs where it's prog-like and this kind of off-center, kind of um, hazy atmosphere that I really like. Capitolo 4 is the name of this album. It came out in the 80s, I believe. <clears throat> Not all of this album is good, but there's parts where it's like, Ooh, they just could have just done a whole album moving in that direction. Swans. Stark Dark Beauty is the, what I have to say about Swans. This is some very intense, naked, honest, powerful music. And I've played both of these all the way through. Greed and Holy Money. And I've met Michael Gyra. Gyra, however you say his name. When I saw Swans, I got to go backstage and meet him, and he wanted to be he wanted to be all kind of off putting at first, you know it didn't work because the person that introduced me was good friends with Norman, who's in his band, and then also once you get into my presence and this is not an ego thing, this is a human thing you're you know you feel me, I feel you, and his he let his guard down, I got a picture of us, and he smiled and talked and actually showed interest in me. I like to share those things, but this is some dark, stark more than dark, but it is dark. Naked Honest Beauty, Swans, this is some badass shit, I was playing this. Whatever they call this music, I forget, um, post rock or something like that, but Pelican moves slowly but elegantly and at times beautifully and this one is called forever becoming this is not a colored vinyl southern lore you know they do multiple editions of most of their releases but this is just really some good stuff pelican like i said i've been i've been music is as my savior because the news is horrible levitation terry bickers from house of love had this band for a while after he left house of love and this is the After Ever EP. Psychedelic, powerful, punk all mixed together. Just really cool shit. The graphics are well matched to the music. Speaking of that, I was rocking some House of Love. This 12-inch single, Never, with the great B-sides, um, Soft as Fire and Safe. I really do think that um, when it comes to um, a basic pop song or just a, a a good song that you can put in a pop sensor i think you can play it in other ways besides pop i think guy chadwick is a great songwriter under appreciated i love his songs i do i love the way they move proyecto a out of spain a uh, very interesting story about this album it's it is progressive but it's also this kind of freak out 
nightclub from space music and it has a concept where each song is about one of the planets and this one guy that you see on the front is the main guy behind the the uh the project it's from the 70s very strange very cool very cool doesn't sound like anything it's like it's like he he it's hard to explain it's really good shared this i've had this forever this is kind of an unusual album that you not much is um known about italian concept album ultima spiaggia um and it's the name of the label that it got started and it's a mixture of musicians and i guess so uh, a, a fellow who used to be a pop star in italy since i don't speak italian i'm not sure what this is about musically it's very all over the place i mean it it's 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 a melange is that the right word where it's electronics to spoken word to rock and roll to choir to uh, um like marching band music don't really know what it's about but it's a uh, and it's it's um rare it's uh what, when you look this up ultima spiaggia i'll write down the names of stuff this is not cheap the um, late Pekka Paiola, uh, fantastic musician, bassist, and composer. Pewit or Pewit, however you say this, double album. I've got this recently to add to my collection. I've got a bunch of his albums. Listen to um, one side of this. It's like a suite. And he really did embody in his composing so many of the elements that draw me to European music. Um, uh, no, I don't think it's a Vaughn Williams I'm thinking of, but there is a melodicism and a lyricism as well as a power, you know, his uh, use of quiet, soft, and loud, wonderful. I don't know if I've shown this. This is a recent um, acquisition um, from Through the Mail. A reissue of an interesting old album by this man called Cultural Noise, Aphorisms Insane. And it's, uh, each is, it's a side-long piece, each side, electronic. And I have to come back to this because it's like, um, it's a mixed, to me it's like they're trying a lot of things. Not necessarily everything is lining up with the stars. But as you, I would say, it by the, you can tell by the cover that something interesting is going on here. Aphorisms insane. I'm glad to have added this. But yes. Okay, so if I didn't show these, I want to say this much. I was I pulled my Blackfield albums, the um, project between Stephen Wilson and this cat Abby Geffen. I was thinking that maybe it was time for me to maybe trade these. But I really like what Stephen Wilson does. I do. And this is Stephen Wilson music more than anything. You know, it's a collaboration with this guy in front, but it's really Stephen Wilson music. And I have both. I have the first two. This one and Blackfield 2. I like them both. And the last thing I'll show is um, my most recent uh, acquisition. As I said, I went down to... Um, record store day and left empty-handed from record store day but there was one item in the used section that I took home and it's this album by a fellow named Michael Zachkowski People the Sky and what it is is it's a this goes 1969 it's a, an electronic album realized on the Bukla modular synthesizer which is a particular system um morton sabotnik i believe that's how he realized his most famous pieces and this is wonderful this is just what i'm looking for it is impressionistic electronic music not attempting to be anything but what it can create within its capacity and this is really good I didn't know anything about this. 
so that's what we have musically and that's kind of cool I can put those away it seems like I've shown pretty much the rest of this um, I don't know if I've shown this but this is another one I've been waiting to put, get this in the in my collection for a while even though I really don't listen to Heldon that much one they have like one album of theirs that I like in particular but I like having the collection it's and it's something just you have to be in the mood for it's almost like fripper fripper tronics close to that but Heldon's third album it's only rock and roll been been needing a copy of this this is the reissue but I recently got this so the David Nance um, segment of the Goner Fest I I'm, I'm imagining probably maybe one or two of you if any watched it really happy with how it turned out and my understanding is that you had to pay to watch it on the website in general I think that their their festival would probably had mixed success I hope that they had some financial success but I understand they're going to post it on YouTube the uh, different performances and once that's happening I will send a link share a link because um, I was happy with it the, you know the we vibe you know I really enjoyed playing with um, David and the other guys. It shows, and, it, and you can hear it. Okay. We've got to hang on to our sanity in these insane times. And I will not be deterred by folks with bad intentions, because it's really obvious to decent people that what's happening worldwide with leadership and power and COVID is really um, making it even more stark is that people who are in power just really are have no intention of taking care of the real problems of the world they're just playing with the power while they live their lives and um, you know um, maybe if I was on the receiving end of that I would be just as arrogant and selfish and fucked up as they are but I'm not so I will keep speaking out about the injustice of it the injustice of racism systemic you know the sad shit about Brianna you know the whole the latest thing with tax tax taxes that Trump never paid and of course people who know who have known all along he's a failed businessman but the, the, the Trump cult you know who are blindly obedient to his personality th they just don't care about the facts it's very strange because what's the end game? Where is this leading us? What is the uh, long view of the stance? You know, where is it taking the country and the world? How can this be good that we're dealing with this bullshit asshole? I can't get a good answer. I've been really talking a lot <coughs> online, if you, got, you guys follow me. And I can't get sense out of oh what a strange world i had i had to talk about it see you soon